people who are going welcome back to run stick hub and today i'm going to be showing you how to download and install true nas for this video i'm going to be using my mini pc and for the next couple of videos the raspberry pi 5 so let's get started go to google and type in true nas that's t-r-u-e-n-a-s true nas it comes up with the first website click on that website it's going to take you to this page here we have two versions of true nas we have true nas enterprise which we will obviously have to pay for but i don't want to pay and we have true nas community edition so i'm going to go for true nas community edition click on learn more and under true nas community edition we have true nas core and we have true nas scale i'm going to be going with true nas scale because it says next generation unified storage plus apps this is the older version reliable unified storage i might want some apps later on i'm not sure yet so i might as well go with this version here so i'm going to download this one i'm going to go to where it says download scale when this web page comes up i'm going to scroll down to the very end you can sign up if you want to but i'm not going to sign up right now i'm going to go to no thank you i have already signed up click on that i'm going to download stable legacy is going to be the older version so i'm going to go to stable it's going to probably download an iso yep i'm going to let that finish and then i'm going to drag this onto my memory stick that has ventoy installed ventoy is a program by the way let me just quickly show you what this looks like ventoy this is a completely free program, but you can donate, I believe. It lets you put multiple ISOs on a single memory stick so you can have multiple bootable drives on a single memory stick. So I do this quite a bit. I'm going to plug in my memory stick now and show you what this looks like. This is my memory stick here plugged in. I have many, many operating systems on here. So as you can see, I've got Debian 12.5, Elementary OS, Kali Linux, Mint, Open Media Vault, I've got Zorin OS, Windows 11, Windows 10, TrueNAS Scale. So I have all these things on this single memory stick. It's something I would highly recommend for people who change operating systems a lot or you fix computers or you have to be installing different operating systems frequently. Really, really good tool. It saves me the hassle of having multiple memory sticks just to install a single operating system for each one. That's what I used to do. So I used to walk around with like 10 memory sticks with each with a different operating system. But now I simply have two memory sticks. One is a backup of the other one. This is the main one that has all these operating systems and I can even put more if I really want to. On the left hand side, I have my downloads folder and on the right hand side, I have my bootable drive. Now you do not have to use a vent or a bootable drive. You can just create a normal bootable drive using whatever memory stick you have. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto my bootable drive. So drag and drop there. Wait for that to finish copying. Then I'm going to move over to my mini PC, enter my boot menu and install TrueNAS. Just a quick reminder of what's already running. So I'm by my PC now. This is the PC I'm going to be using. This one here. I've got two monitors with two separate PCs. That's the mini PC there I'm going to be using for this one. It does have a SSD attached via USB. Over here, I still have the Raspberry Pi 5, I believe, attached to an SSD again using USB. So that's the one for the Raspberry Pi. And this is the one for the mini PC. So I'll be doing the mini PC first. So I'm going to jump into this and show the entire process. I don't have any screen capture hardware, so I'm going to have to use my mobile phone and try to do the best I can. By the way, this is a mini PC. The mini PC is here in the middle and at the top I have a fan blowing downwards and at the bottom I have a fan blowing upwards. They're connected via USB, but I hold them down using a rubber band because again, if I'm going to be using this as a NAS, I want it as cool as possible. This kind of helps me do that in a very cheap and simple way. So don't judge. Step one for me, I'm going to power on the mini PC. And as soon as you start to come on, I'm going to press F7 on the keyboard here. This is going to bring up the boot menu on this PC. And from here, I should be able to install the operating system I want. I'm going to choose the USB one here, the second option for me. That first one is going to be the internal SSD because I know it's a Lexar 256 gigabyte SSD. The second one is going to be the UEFI BIOS option, USB partition 2. Don't worry about anything else. I'm going to press on that one. If you've also used Ventoy, you might see something similar to this. Even if you have not used Ventoy, you might just see the name of the operating system here. Press enter. I'm on here. And again, Ventoy allows me to have all these operating systems on a single drive. I will put a link to a tutorial in the description of this video, but very, very useful. I used to walk around with more than five memory sticks, and now I walk around with one main memory stick with everything on there and a backup just in case that, that one fails at some point. So I'm going to be installing TrueNAS Scale. I think I have, okay, this is a slightly updated version. I have two versions on here. I'm going to press enter on that. I'm going to boot in normal mode because I'm going to completely wipe this. Start TrueNAS Scale installation. So that's the first option there. These 
these are the options I'm given when I try to install this. So this is what it boots to. Install, stroke, upgrade, shell, reboot system, shutdown system. I'm moving through the menu using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And when I've selected something, if I need to select something, I press enter. So for the first one, which is the one I need, install or upgrade, I'm going to press enter there. I'm going to choose to install it. It says choose a destination media. So where do you want to install this thing? Two, for me, I know it's going to be the Lexar drive there. You need to choose the main internal drive that you want to install this to. I am not sure if you're able to install this on external USB. That might be a really good option, but I don't know. I've never tried it. I'm going to press OK on this. You need to select at least one disk. OK, so I'm guessing I need to select um, highlighted. So maybe with space. So yeah, so you press space on your keyboard to highlight it. That thing there ticks and it comes up. Then I'm going to press enter. I proceed with installation. Yep. Yep, that's fine. This option here says web UI authentication method. We can do administrative user, so that's admin. We can do root user, not recommended. That's the big one that you can do anything you want. We can configure using web UI. I'm gonna go with the very first one, administrative user. Press enter, password. I'm gonna keep it very simple, but obviously you can make your password whatever you want. You will have to confirm the password, so that means to retype it a second time. Let me do that. After you've confirmed, you press enter. It's going to come up with a whole load of stuff, but I'll sit here and wait. Oh, okay. Create 16 gig swap on a boot device. Press enter to create swap. Swap is going to be the temporary place that things are written to before they're finally written to the actual drive. Everything's all finished. It says the TrueNAS installation on SDA succeeded. Please reboot and remove the installation media. What this means, you need to reboot the system, unplug the memory stick or the USB stick, and then you should be okay. Press okay. I'm going to reboot system now. And while that's rebooting, I'm going to unplug the memory stick. This is the very first boot after the installation was finished. I have two options here, TrueNAS scale GNU Linux 24.04.2. I'm just going to go to that one. The full setup process has now completed. I've got nine options here, which I'm going to ignore for now. The main one for me is that first one at the very top. And it says that the web user interface is at, and it gives me the IP address. I can access this from HTTP or HTTPS, which is more secure, obviously. But because this is an internal IP address, it really doesn't matter. If anyone watching this video tries to type this in, it won't work. So there's no point in doing that. The next video is most likely going to be on me accessing that, setting up a drive, doing all the updates and seeing how this thing works compared to Open Media Vault. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned.